Let's talk about one of the most fascinating topics in biology, niche construction. So if you go out and you look at the environment, here's a nice, really harsh environment in Hawaii. You see that it can be harsh in a variety of ways. So here it gets quite hot. But even after the lava cools, it still looks pretty unpleasant. Not such a great place to grow. There's nothing to eat. So it doesn't look like life could readily take advantage of this particular environment. But it turns out it can. In fact, there's lots of plants, and here's some in particular, that can take advantage of this environment, and they start to grow. And they don't take, it just takes a few years for you to see, for us to see this kind of thing. And it's not just lava fields and plants. In fact, there's all sorts of places that plants can grow. So here's a flowering plant, and this, these flowers provide resources for other organisms to take advantage of. And in fact, even on barren rocks, that the waste products of some species, in fact, create resources that make it available for other organisms to take advantage of. So let's go into this just a slightly bit more detail. So here we have our lava field again with our plants. And we have these first species that can sort of take advantage of this opportunity. And they're typically called pioneer species. And these, what these pioneer species do is they break up the environment and newer other species can now invade and, and so on and so on. So instead of just having ferns, you have larger plants, eventually you get trees, and with the trees you get insects and birds and all sorts of the biological complexity that we're typically familiar with that originally you wouldn't easily imagine that could live on a lava field. So when you think about that, there's a lot of things going on there, and it can be challenging to figure out what's the most important thing. So we're going to simplify the system a lot. And instead of looking at lava fields and plants, we're going to look at an E. coli cell. So here's an E. coli, an individual E. coli cell. Well, it's not a real E. coli cell. This is what a real E. coli cell looks like. But that's too complicated, so we're going to use a diagram of an E. coli cell. So, so here's our E. coli cell. And E. coli really, really like to eat glucose. And when you feed them glucose, they make two primary waste products glycerol and acetate. And if you grow uh, E. coli on glucose for hundreds of generations when they're making glycerol and acetate, and if you look at that population of microbes after these hundreds of generations, it turns out you don't have one kind of E. coli, you have three. Three kinds of E. coli. One, one of them really likes to eat glycerol, one of them really likes to eat acetate, and the other one the, is, a, is a glucose specialist. So what you have is, because the original, um, the original genotype made, had waste products from eating glucose, glycerol and acetate. It changed the environment, and it changed the environment in such a way that specialists could evolve. evolve. And so we have metabolic niche specialists. All right, so it turns out that that kind of facilitation and the evolution of niche specialists isn't rare in laboratory cultures. So here is another example of it. You take a Pseudomonas fluorescence colony, and you grow it up under pretty similar conditions, just a, just a flask of media, and you wait three or five days, and you plate it out, and you don't have just one kind of, of Pseudomonas fluorescence at, at, like you started with, you end up with a whole lot of different kinds, and, and sort of three primary different kinds. You have one, the smooth kind, that still likes to grow in the middle. You have a wrinkly spreader kind that actually sort of prefers the top, top layer, and you have this fuzzy spreader that accumulates on the bottom. And so when we look at this kind of uh, microbial facilitation, we see spatial niche specialists evolve. And it happens all the time, and it's super fast. So let's review what we've done so far. So we see what a niche is. A niche is really what an environment where a particular species can grow. And that's typically called a fundamental niche. And that's in contrast to a realized niche when you have lots of different species that are maybe all together and they kind of push against each other. So you don't, you don't live everywhere. So that's typically called the realized niche. And then we have niche construction. And niche construction is how an organism changes its environment that affects its growth of itself and of other organisms. And we see that this is important in the lab where we see the evolution of spatial niche specialists and doing spatial niche construction. And we see that in nature all the time. And we see it in the lab with resource niche um, construction, where microorganisms change their environment. You get the evolution of new niche specialists, and just like you see in nature. All the time we see this, it's everywhere. So there's been a lot of research on this. Some of the most exciting research is using microbes, which is the uh, focus of the, of, the, of the book by Reese Casson, and more generally um, with experimental evolution with flies and other organisms. And the sort of theory behind it um, stretches back to the early 50s, in fact, um, and covers a, a tremendous range of, uh, of, of articles.